what can this molecule directly undergo? What's the most likely possible step? For us, it was an acid-base. We can think, well, is that reasonable? Acid-base reactions are fairly reasonable when you have a, a good base, like sodium hydroxide, and a relatively acidic molecule, like a carbonyl compound. And so that seemed reasonable. And But now we're at a point where maybe we don't know what's going to happen, but we can think about what could happen to give us our final product. And what could happen is that if we took away one of these hydrogens, and we did so in a fashion that could create a double bond, and then kick out OH, we could get our product. And we say, well, we're never going to kick out OH. It's a horrible leaving group. And you would be right if this was an SN2 reaction, but this is not an SN2 reaction. You can't apply the rules of a, a leaving group for every single reaction. Um, like, well, that's another story, but I guess we'll get there when we get there. So OH, don't think of it as always being a bad leaving group. It's not the best, but it doesn't mean it will never happen, it will never leave under any circumstances. Some it will, like we'll see here. So we know that we still have sodium hydroxide floating around. And let me use green, actually, because it might get a little confusing to see here. So if this goes here and takes away a proton, and it transfers this negative charge, or it puts a negative charge on the carbon next to the carbonyl, which we could say that's reasonable because, like we saw here, that electron pair would be delocalized and it would be relatively stable. And if we did that, we would yield this compound. And, of course, it would be the same compound. We just have a negative charge in place of that hydrogen. Okay. And so now what can happen next? Well, we know that all we have to do is form a double bond and kick out OH, so let's do that. If we go here, we'd form that double bond while simultaneously kicking out OH. And it's important to realize this. I will say right after I draw this compound. It's important to realize that I did not do this at the same time. I did not do it what one, an organic chemist would call a concerted fashion. A concerted fashion, meaning I did not do it at the same time. If I did these at the same time, meaning, let's say, I'll just do R, if I took away, I don't know why I did R, that doesn't need to be there, but that's okay. If I took away this hydrogen, right, used the base, took away this hydrogen, kicked that out, all at the same time, this would be an E2. And you could say OH is a bad leaving group for E2. It's of course a G. Um, hydroxide ions are bad leaving groups for E2 reactions, but what I actually did is I didn't do that. We bypassed that and we did what's called an E1CB. It's an E1CB elimination reaction. And we yielded this compound. We yield, well, so that shouldn't be there. We yielded our double bond. Okay, and of course this is our final product. This is it. This is our alpha beta unsaturated ketone. This is our aldol condensation product. Okay, and I mentioned earlier that there are two ways to kind of show how this happens, so I'm going, going to erase all this and then I'll show you that second step. Okay, and that's this. If we go to the point where we form our aldol, and this is important to recognize this, the aldol, I mean, it's a stable compound. We don't necessarily have to go to the alpha beta unsaturated product. We could, you could um, create or come up with reaction conditions that will favor the formation of this that will not produce the this end product. Okay, but the thing is, is when you see that heat, or when you see this, when you see, you'll have one NaOH, and you should be lacking uh, heat here. You shouldn't be heating the reaction up too much. The second step, you'll see um, an acidic workup, some type of acidic workup. These can both, of course, this would just be NaOH and heat, or so you can have this or that to yield this. So this would be an acid uh, catalyzed dehydration 
of this compound versus the E1C B dehydration of this compound. I can go through that mechanism in just a second, but it's important to realize that this the aldol product can form and totally you can stop the reaction there. And when you would not stop the reaction, whoops, when you would not stop the reaction there is when you have heat or when you have an acidic workup. Okay. So the acidic workup should happen something like this. And don't be confused by this first step. If you've seen this before, it might be a little different than what you've seen. And this is kind of a more advanced concept, but it's le the, the legitimate way to produce this end product. Oop, that lone pair should not be there. Okay, so what we're going to do, you might normally think, well, shouldn't you protonate the alcohol oxygen just, and then have it leave as um, essentially water or oxonium and then do say like an E1 where you then produce the double bond. You would be somewhat correct because maybe that's the way you've been taught how to do this and that way is not entirely accurate. It's not necessarily wrong. It's one way where the, this may occur but the more correct way is to first enolize the carbonyl compound and there's a reason why you would do that and we shall see um, I'm showing X as deprotonating this and forming the enol you should really use water because of course water would be here and it would be more basic than X but again I don't really think we have the ability to determine which one is going to happen and really in short what I'm trying to say is that either one can occur which one's going to happen more of course water would do it more but that doesn't stop the fact that X could also deprotonate but that's kind of an aside okay so we've made the enol and why this is important is this if we now protonate the water or if we now protonate the alcohol and it leaves you will see that there is a very important step here, a very stable compound that forms as the reaction intermediate. So this would be OH2 plus, and we have X minus next to it as a counter ion, and then water, of course, would leave. And we would get this. We'd get our enol, and our enol would have the double bond in conjugation with this carbocation that is much 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 higher in energy than if we just protonated this alcohol and took it off. This is what forms not the direct protonation and the dehydration. This forms first. It's important that you realize that. It might maybe a little bit a little bit differently than what you were taught in your course but you're if you're marked off for writing it this way. I don't understand how that would even be possible. Because this is the correct way to draw this mechanism. Okay, so now what happens now is we can show this in a concerted fashion. Uh, the H being deprotonated again. You can show water doing this. Water is more correct. I just have a bad habit of doing this. So this goes, so be better than me. This goes here, that goes there, reforming our double bond and then the double bond, carbon-carbon double bond, transfers to there and we get our final product. So it's important that you can recognize both of these ways to make the end product and it's also important that you can recognize that the aldol is also stable and doesn't necessarily have to form this. It will only do so under Vigorous reaction conditions, vigorous is just a fancy word for heat, a hot reaction conditions, uh, or very basic, or rigorous in terms of very acidic, which of course would be this way here. Okay, I hope this all makes sense. If it didn't, please comment, write me a message, I can clear anything up, and I hope this helps you, and I hope you get some pointers out of here of how to maybe apply this to other reactions in the future, other mechanisms that you may not have seen, but you can maybe, maybe um, apply the concepts here to figure them out. Okay, see you guys next time.